Father's Day. It's an amazing, amazing thing. Yeah. It's a great responsibility to be a father. Yes. There's a lot of biological causes mm -hmm. for the children in this world. But it's sad to say um, there's a lack of real, real fathers. Now, the Lord, Lord can help us yeah. to be what we need to be for our children. Yes, well, yeah. It's we not only need to raise our children to know how to work and our young men, our boys, know how to step up, but we need to teach our fathers how to bring up their children spiritually, that um, they would grow up to be saved and be all God wants them to be. That's, that's, a, that's a job bigger than me or you or all of us together. And in that responsibility of, of bringing up children is huge. Every time a, a child is born into this world, that child has more value than all this world put together. And we think some of us have a child of more than one child. And so God gives us these children that we're to return back to him. Because they're, they're, they're in our, our temporary care, our responsibility, but ultimately they all return unto God. And, right. And God has given us, given us uh, uh, this great, great responsibility as fathers. And the greatest thing that could happen to you as a father is when your children do grow up, that they'll rise up and call you blessed. I think this world, it, it, it is hurting in many ways because of the lack of fathers, real biblical fathers. And I think any pastor, teacher, or minister would be amiss in their duty if they did not teach young men and, and, and potential fathers and, and fathers that are now uh, 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 going through that responsibility and how to be a good father. What a job, what a, what a responsibility. I, right. I, I think some of us, uh, we, we missed. Our, our fathers were not the best. I, I, I can say my, my father, uh, I love my father. He, 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 he had some mishaps and, and uh, not everything went right. But through that experience, I learned that Lord, help me if I ever have children that I could be a good, responsible father and stick to it. I learned this also. Some, of, some in this audience may not have had the best father, but I, I found out that you have to forgive them anyways. A lot of times uh, uh, there's a cycle that takes place mm -hmm. and they become just like their father. Do you, do you know if, if, if you despise or hate somebody, you're most likely going to become like that person? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. See, that's just how it is. I, I see a, a lot of young men, they despise their fathers. 
but then they become like their father because they can't find forgiveness for what they did. And that's something that happens over and over again. And so no matter where you're at, if you want to go further, you have to get your relationship right with your father. Now listen, whether they're living or not living, yes. Amen. you can still forget them. Yes. And allow that to work in your heart so you don't end up making the same mistakes, but, but forgiving with a real heartfelt forgiveness. But I'm talking now to the living. In order to have a strong congregation or a strong people, you have to have strong fathers. You have to have strong fathers. And as we go, we'll probably talk about what a strong father Amen. is. And I'll add this. If you're a father and you made mistakes, you can ask for forgiveness too. Yes. And because you probably are going to make some mistakes. You really will make some mistakes. Yes. Amen. So trying to do your very best. And, 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 uh, and I'll, I'll invite you young people in and children, don't look at your father and, and, and try to find faults and mistakes. Don't try to do that. Because they'll be there, but it won't help you. But as much as possible within us, as fathers and, and young men, let's do our very best to be what God wants us to be. Amen. Yes. And then love will cover a multitude of faults. So, with that, we will we will go on. Let's turn to Luke chapter one. One and thirteen. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John, and thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and in the power of Elias. And turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. And the disobedient to wisdom of the just. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Amen. He shall turn the hearts of the fathers yes. to the children. This is John was preparing the way for Christ. Mm -hmm. And through these scriptures, we see that one of the divine works of God in the end time will be God turning the hearts of the fathers to the children. Amen. Let me say this also to add to this. You may not have any children that came out of your loins, but yet, if you are in Israel, in a sense, you have children, or at least you're a big brother to somebody, and you have some responsibility. Amen. John was excellent. One thing he excelled at was showing men 
the path of self-denial. I don't know if there's a man that walked on the face of the earth that denied himself more than John the Baptist. Uh, remarkable for self-denial. He lived in a time of gross darkness. Mm -hmm. We live in the same kind of time where, where we live in a time of gross darkness. Right. Gross darkness what a family unit is. Gross darkness what it means to be a family. Gross darkness with husband and wife relationships and, and, and father and sons and that interaction in the, within the family unit. Mm -hmm. Gross darkness. And it's getting darker. And it's getting darker. Malachi... I'm going to turn there just for a minute. Malachi chapter 4. I'm not worried about going fast. I just want to cover this. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Now I want to say that as we go on, there's spiritual fathers. Paul said there's not many fathers. And there's spiritual fathers, and there's um, natural fathers. And it's really amazing at the end, the last verse in the Old Testament deals with this subject. Mm -hmm. yeah. Think about it in the beginning, and look, it deals with this subject. Right. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to the father lest I come and smite the earth with the curse. We live in a time of the curse and God needs some real fathers. God needs fathers that turn their hearts to their children it's, it's not all about you. Right. It's not about you sitting on an easy chair, but rather that you're supplying the need for your children. That you're the one who, if someone has to suffer, it's you. It's you are the one who is doing a work of being a father. And a lot of times the children cannot look at the father in the respectful way that they ought to look is because it's the father's duty to first turn his heart towards the children. And when they do that, the children in response will turn their hearts towards their fathers. Fathers must be an example. They must be an example. Yes. The, the greatest thing you can do is have your children find you on your knees, pleading with your heavenly Father to help you to be a father. Right. One of the most blessed things your children will hear is when you're calling out their name to God and they wake up and hear, my dad is calling out my name to God. How often do we hear that? How often is that found in the world? We see the curse that has come upon the world because men have not been taught. It seems like men have lost their way. There's a real lack of masculinity in the world. 
When I talk about masculinity, I'm talking about fathers knowing how to be fathers and to lay down their lives for their children and not the other way around, the children sacrificing for the father. We, we live in a time where, where fathers are missing in action, can't be found. We, we live in a time where, where, where it used to be a father would supply for his family uh, uh, in some kind of way. But that's missing. Children must have fathers in their lives. Children must. Children must have fathers that will go on their knees and play with little Johnny and little Susie. They must. It's not an option. Father's not a place where you're just commanding everybody what to do. It's not a place where you're just a big man. You got your little, your little castle and you're just ruling over it and, and you're just in charge. No, it's not that. You are, you are king of your castle in a sense, but only as you learn how to be a servant, only as you learn how to pray, only as you learn how to play with your children. God had given fathers an amazing place. You remember how it was when you're about this small? My daddy's the strongest. My daddy can do this. I remember I used to say, my daddy can spank harder than your dad. <laughs> and I was bragging about it. And they say, oh no, my daddy can spank harder. I said, no, 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 your daddy can't. Because my daddy's the strongest. My dad. So why did God put that in children? Was it just because God it just happens? No, God put it in children because God gives them an opportunity to show God through them. Right. Yes, Lord. What, a, what an amazing thing. God did that. Now God gives children favor with their fathers. And the father can say to, let's say, Slevin, you know what? That's a good man over there. You listen to that man. Yes, right. And he, he, can, he can turn over those children to others to help. Because I, I, I want to tell you, fathers, that you have, you have the possibility of helping your children immensely if you turn them over to others too. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. Amen. And say, that's a good man, son. Yes. You listen to him too. But what fathers many times do is they capture the children and try to pull them in a place where they have total, just total control. And that's not biblical. And that's not Christian. Right. So God has blessed you with the child, our children, and here you are, a father, and you've never done it before. You've never done this before. And, and many of us come from backgrounds where maybe we, we, we never knew how to do it. We didn't have an example as a father, and, and we're fighting our way through this. Lord, how do I be a good father? I, I'm not sure, and we're just unsure, but we... But there's something about it. We, we realize that I have a responsibility, not only that they grow up and get a good job, and not only that, that, that I raise them that they can work, but I raise them that, that they can be saved someday and be united with me in heaven. Yes, Because your number one job is to help them to go to God's heaven. Yes, amen. Almost every social issue facing this nation and every other nation today stems from a lack of father. Right, that's true. That's true. Yes. yes. 
If you have little girls, you need to hug those little girls. Because if you don't hug them, someone else will. Mm -hmm. And it won't be the best person in the world. Yes. Fathers. Thank God we have some older fathers in here. Thank God. Amen. I look at Brother Paul, I can tell by his daughters he's done a good job. By the way, I can tell they appreciate him. You can just see it. Yes. Yes. And, that, and that's how you want it to be when you get older. Amen. Yes. That they'll rise up and call you blessed. Yes. So the Father's heart must be turned. Fathers, it's going to take a father to impart masculinity mm -hmm. and not a mother. Yeah. And you have a, 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 a precious, precious responsibility. So I dare say the first image of God, children usually get the concept through their fathers. I think I'm right. Yes. What is God like? Is he harsh? Is he mean? Is he loving? Is he caring? I just got done reading a book called Go Tell It On the Mountain by James Baldwin. And he's a famous person uh, in the civil rights movement. And he had a hypocritical father who was very religious. He turned away from his father and went another way. The worst father in the world is a hypocritical religious father. There's nothing beyond that. There's nothing worse than a hypocritical religious father. Now, the devil hates you and your children. Yes, he does. He does not like your right. children. Remember in the Bible where the father came to Jesus and said, the devil is throwing down my child. How old was that? He was at nine years. How does he know? He was a young child. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't say. I don't think it does say. But the devil is trying to to hurt yeah. our families. You have to be aware of that. You have to be aware of that. I want to read some verses. I've read them before, but let's turn to First Thessalonians. I think I have a little bit here. Time yet. And it's, it's speaking about the Father Paul, and he's speaking to his congregation. So, what, what, what do I do if I've messed up as a father? Know what you do? I'll tell you what you do. You doubt go back to your child and say, I messed up. Would you please forgive me? Please forgive me. I'm so sorry. If you have mercy on me and forgive me, I won't do it again. I'm going to tell you something else about Father. All these things are very, very important. I want you to get this. Amen. Yes, Lord. If you as a father do not know how to obey your boss, your minister, your pastor, your children will learn the same thing from you and they'll become disobedient. Yes, that's true. Right. Hear that again. If you as a father do not learn how to be in subjection to other men, and me included and everyone else, your children will become 
disobedient and rebellious against you eventually because it's hypocritical. Right. Yeah. I'm speaking truth today. Amen. We need real fathers. Yes. Yes. Amen. Masculinity has left the world almost. Yeah. Fathers who know how to stick to it and say, whether this is difficult, whether it's very, very hard, I'm sticking to it. Right. Yes. Not, only, not only will I have a wife, but I'll love her and respect her in front of the children. I will show the children how much I love my wife. When she gets old and things wrinkle and things fall apart, I will be a man and do my part and love my wife. Your children need to see you hugging your wife sometimes. Mm, that I had about two days. All right, let's keep going. Verse 2 and 7. But we are gentle among you, even as a nurse cherishes her children, so being effectually desirous of you, we are willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because you are dear unto us. For you remember, brethren, our labor and travail for laboring night and day because we would not be chargeable unto any of you. We preached unto you the gospel of God. You are a witness and God how holy, justly, and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. And you know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father doth your children. Oh, my. You remember my work ethic. Right. You remember my lack of complaining. Yes. Some of you are miserable complainers. The weather's too hot. It's too cold. This is hard. Miserable. You complain about everything. Oh, my children were smarter if they were brighter, if they would just learn to obey. You're just following your example. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. Come on, man. That's girlish to complain. Children, the next time your fathers do that, say, Daddy, I love you, but you're acting a little bit like a girl right now. Mm -hmm. Stop your complaining. Yes. Endure something. There's nothing worse than a man complaining. There's a spirit of complaining. There's a spirit in it. Nothing's just right. too cold. It's too hot. This food isn't right. My bed's too hard. It's like the, it's, it's like Goldilocks. <laughs> this bed's too hard. This bed's too soft. This food is, this bowl's too big. Oh, come on. Endure something, man. <laughs> it's silly some of the things I don't like them I can't get along with them oh poor you yes. poor you and you're supposed to ask you're, come on poor you and then when we hear the whole family is supposed to have a pity party <laughs> 
let's, let's have a party tonight about our big woes. Uh, you're dear unto us. We, we, we're going to fire our souls. Great fathers, this is some notes I have, are not harsh and cruel. They're not soft and feminine. They know how to fight, and they know how to lay down the sword. And they fight the devil, and they fight everything that would try to hurt their family. They are protectors first. They are men. They're made strong. They carry the burden of the family. They carry the spiritual burden. They should. They should carry the burden and be the example of what it is. I pity children who have not seen their father in a wrestling match with God like Jacob wrestled with the angel. You must get into your hearts of your children. I'm just telling you the truth. I don't know if your father got into your heart of, your, of, of you or not. But some way you have to find a way into your heart of your child. Yes, in such a way, in such a way, when they become like 13, 15, 17, and 18, when the devil says, do this, They'll go, oh, I can't. Do you know how that would hurt my father if I did that? Yes. I can't do it. But that doesn't just happen. Right. By osmosis, by doing nothing, it's by getting into their hearts where, 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 where they, they, they see God, they see you, and, and, they, they, and they want to do right by you. Fathers have that much sway. They do. I know many young women and young men who are saved because they love their fathers. And they said, what would dad think? What would dad say? And that doesn't happen by you being cold and indifferent and, and coming home and sitting down and I, I, I want to eat now. But it's involvement. It's... it's it, it being a part. We'll take a real effort. You know, do you know it's going to take a real effort? And 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 I'll, I'll be honest. I see many fathers don't want to pay the price because they're tired. And they're worn out. They've been working hard all day. And now God says, you got more responsibility. you got to work some more. It's not over yet. Right. But I'm tired. So what? If you're a man, you got to get you got to get going. you got to, you have family. you have something more valuable than anything, and you've got to get going. Some of you have, some of you, not, not in this, some, no, maybe some in this room, but I doubt, are so sissified. It's all about me, 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 me. It's not about you anymore once you have a child. It's not you anymore. It's not about you. I'm sorry. You've got to grow up fast. I've seen, so, I've seen so many 70-year-old men sucking their thumbs. Still sucking their thumbs and they should be grown up. And the world's passed them by and they're wondering what's happening. You've been sucking your thumb for so long. It's sickening. Be a father is one of the highest callings. It'll cost you, listen, everything yes. to be good at it. 
To be good at it. And you always want to learn more because we never will know enough. But you have a heart and your children will look past your mistakes and see daddy was trying because you're going to make mistakes. Your children must, not an option, must feel your affection towards them or they will find it somewhere else. It might be in a bottle of beer or drugs or whiskey or, 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 or prostitution or, or, or homosexuality. They'll find it somewhere. Right. That's See. Now, listen. I am preaching a high standard. And you, 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 you might say, well, brother, I, I don't know how to get there. Well, I'm telling you, just go the best you can. Try to get there. Amen. Yes. Some, some of you are weak in this area and some are weak in this area. But get there. Yes. Yes, Lord. Get there some way because you have something before you. And young men, you got to get there. I, I, I see too many lazy young men pampering their flesh. Young men, not married, but baiting themselves too much. They'll never make it. Gotta get over that. Gotta get over that. Yes. You don't know how to work. You don't know how to. You must be an intentional person. You must allow your children to find you some, doing something amazingly well. Dedicated. You must let your light shine. Mm -hmm. The highest expression of your love is to lay down your life for someone else. Jesus taught us that. When I say lay down your life for someone else, I mean by that it's no more about you. Yes, it's no more about pleasing yourself, but about helping and doing your job as a man and responsibly doing your job as a man. You have to be a man. And you young men, we need to teach our children and our boys how to be men. Yes. How they're not first. Paul exhorted, encouraged, consoled, comfort, sustained, charged. A strong man is not a bully. He knows how to win hearts. He knows how to be his ch child's hero, hero and not take advantage of it. Paul said he was affectionately desirous of them. His desire to be with his children, to be in their presence. They ordered their lives that they can spend much time with their children. Here's, here's one. You, God breathed into you the breath of life. When you got saved, Yeah. 
Apple doesn't fall far from the tree. So you must breathe the God that you have in you into your children. Amen. Yes, Lord. You must breathe that God into them by your speech, by your attitudes, by the way you live. You're breathing into them your life in God to them. You call to love your children. A great deal of your work will be done on your knees. Sometimes on your knees playing with your children, sometimes on your knees praying for them. I want you to listen to this. Many children are lost because daddy's lazy. Many children are lost mm -hmm. simply because daddy is lazy. Mm -hmm. God has called you not to be a biological cause, but a father. Learn to be an example coming underneath authority. I'll say it again. Learn to be an example coming underneath authority. Yes. Learn how to come home and tell how the boss told you to do something and you did extra. Mm -hmm. You didn't do the bare minimum the boss asked you to do. We have a generation that, brother, it's, it's hey. embarrassing. Man, they do true. the bare minimum to get by on their job. Right. So true. If they need 10, they'll get 10. Mm -hmm. At about 9, they start slowing down. Brother, we're not like that. We're, we're people of God. We're church of God. We go way beyond. Amen. Yes. Way beyond. <coughs> Let your life be an example that can be followed. Did you hear that? Let your life be an example that can be followed. Now I want you to hear this. Listen. In this chapter, he charges them with fatherly affection and not fatherly authority. He charged them with fatherly affection, not fatherly authority. If you're constantly raising your voice, you're obviously doing something wrong. You're doing something wrong. And you need to stop and figure out what am I doing wrong And if you don't know, seek out some help. Amen. Yes, Lord. That's good. It's the children's welfare you're seeking, not yes, your own. Yes, Lord. Not your own. Now, I put that up there pretty high, didn't I? I, I, I did. I did put it up there. I'm not ashamed about that, but I want you to reach. Yes, Lord. I want you to reach. And when you do fail, mm -hmm. say, I'm sorry, children, I failed. But I'm reaching. I'm trying to do better. I'm, 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 I'm reaching. I'm reaching. Sometimes 
you gonna sit down, bring your child next to you and talk to them. Say, son, how can I be a better father? You know what that does? And if they tell you something wrong, don't get on them. You'll shut them up forever. You want them to have a relationship with you where they can be open and they won't feel crushed. When they say something wrong. Because then they won't open up to you. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. Your children know when you're being a good father and when you're not. Know what a word that's missing in a lot of homes? Mm -hmm. Forgive me. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I missed that. Some of you fathers are way backward in that. Amen. You owe a lot of forgiveness. Yes, Lord. You owe a lot. And I know there's a place for children. I know there's a place for wives. And one day we'll do that too. But right now it's Father's. Amen. It's Father's Day, right? Yes. Thank the Lord. Thank God for Father's Day. Yes. You young fathers, I envy you. That's so nice. To have little children. That's so nice. Now, I, I'm just going to do this because I, I need to. Thank the Lord. If one, if you messed up as a father, you need to go back and correct it. Mm -hmm. mm. You got to go back and correct it. You have no choice. Go back and correct it. But what if they won't hear? Go back and try. Try. Please forgive me. Because I know you did mess up sometimes. Because we all mess up. Yes. Let them know I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And I want to talk to you children and young, even older people. You had a father that messed up. You can hold them all your life if you want. But it won't do you any good at all. It's only going to hurt you. When I was young, I used to say, tell my dad's false to everybody. The Lord taught me, be quiet. Close your mouth. And thank God for your father. But he did this, he did that, I understand. But be quiet. Close your mouth and run it out. And forgive them. Some of you, Father, are very poor. I never see you at the altar, my Charlie. What about your children? They never see you sorry and seeking more of God and saying, Lord, I messed up. How is that going to affect their vision? That won't make you less of a hero. But why? Hmm. If I have my manhood to protect, 
you're going to lose it. Right. And you lose your children in the process. Right. You need to come way, way down. One thing I've noticed, we don't have a lot of altar work. Now, I wonder if it's the fathers, the young men. Altar work isn't just a, a show. It's a place where you get up and you're kind of acknowledging that they don't need to know everything, but I need help. And I can't do it all on my own. And then they see you broken and they start to break. Own your faults, own your weaknesses. And deal with it. Now we're about out of time. I believe God spoke to you. Amen. Yes, thank now it's up to you what you're going to do with that. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Up to you what you're going to do. Amen. What are you going to do? What are you going to do, young man? You don't become a father overnight. You don't become a father the day the child is born. You don't become, that doesn't happen like that. You, you, you watch your father, who I trust is a godly father. If he's not, you find someone to watch. Keep your eyes on them and learn how to be a father. Some men don't have the work ethic. They don't have the affection. They don't have the command of their own self. They don't know how to deny themselves. They don't. And they want to get married. A whole nother time. We're going to finish now because we have about four minutes. I want to thank you for your time. I want God to speak to you, deal with you. Yes, Lord. Gather your family around you. Ask them how you can do better. Because I know you can do better. 